are we in this thing? Is the melanin on and activated? Yes, it is. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your girl, Miss P. I hope that you are doing fabulous. I am doing well. Make sure to go ahead and thumbs up this video. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already and follow your girl on social media at Miss TP90. And you've seen the title correctly. It is time to get into this love and hip hop Hollywood episode number three. Ciao. <laughs> going to give the I was thoroughly entertained award to A1 Steak Sauce Mama. I think her name Pam. I feel like she makes a great cornbread. Like I really thought that that cornbread was going to be life. I bet she makes good greens. Like I bet she makes pretty good food. But um, yeah, I have to say I was thoroughly entertained by A1 Steak Sauce Mama Pam. So yeah, make sure to comment down below. You feel me? Can't wait to see y'all comments. You just might get a shout out in the next review. You feel me? But anyway, let's go on and get into this episode review. Oh my God, my throat. <coughs> I need a lozenge. Let's go on and get it too. We pick up where we left off last episode where A1 Steak Sauce and Shrit Safari were getting ready to fight across the car. No security wasn't gonna let that happen. They pulled them away from each other. You shouldn't have been texting her, bro. And K. Michelle said you was trying to fuck on my neck. I was like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, God, these are fighting words. And Safari, when he said bitches love me, I was like, whoa. Are you trying to say let lyric me? Like, you doing a lot, Safari. You been feeling yourself ever since your little dick. Well, it wasn't a little dick. Was all over the everybody's um, personal iPhone devices. But either way, Safari, sir. Y'all know I love me some Safari. But, child, I don't know what is going on with him this season. Or I don't know. I guess he said, let me go ahead and make a splash, honey. So everybody remember, stretch. And A1, I mean, I see where you're getting at, bro, bro. I mean, she like you shouldn't be texting her i mean you should be doing all that extra men okay and we gonna talk about that a little bit later if him sending his dick pictures <laughs> when a1 said you weak safari was like how you gonna call me weak how somebody with nail polish and sparkling shoes gonna call me weak i said you know what safari you have a point there but you never know honey a1 might whip one of them dreads on you and your life will be over and they're making these threats to each other it's gonna happen bro i'm gonna see you bro straight i can't take either one of you guys Seriously, I, as much as I enjoy A1 and as much as I enjoy Safari, I don't take either one of them seriously because half the time whenever I'm looking at them, I take anything that they're saying as a joke because it's just weak sauce. I don't see anything with them. I really don't. And I really want to get down to the bottom of this because I'm like, Lyrica girl, don't take it personal. But what you strict? I'll suffer dick. Like, what was y'all doing? A princess in Paris, they have a nice little talky talk. Paris missed the gender reveal. She missed everything that had happened was, and princess has to tell her what happened. So here come Ray J. I'm sorry, y'all. I think I got something by. But princess was like, I'm never talking to Brandy again. I felt the same way as Paris. Like, I can't believe Cinderella would do something like that. But ever since I caught up on Star, if y'all have not watched Star, come on after Empire. Y'all need to get y'all life. That's a good ass show. But ever since I've seen her now, as um, Queen Latifah sister Cassie, I'm like, oh shit, she got that up her sleeve, honey. It's, it's in her. Ray J pulls up and he apologizes to the princess because you know what? It's all about my princess and my little princess that's baking in that oven, aka your womb. But if I had one wish, I'm like, Ray J, shut the hell up. I forgive you, Ray. And he was like, I need you. Come home. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Ray J, shut the hell up. I can't. Princess Love tells Ray J what had happened was with Monice and the potential throwing of the chair. Nah, Monice gotta get checked. He's another one that I look at and go, okay. Now the families are at war. The Norwoods and the whatever Monice's last name of her family is. They're at war. I, I don't believe it. I just, I just don't believe it. Brooke has been doing the most and it's only episode number three. But this episode, I have to say, was a little bit more realistic because she was going to get like a breast reduction and she was doing a little consultation and the doctor was like, for sure, we can go in here and do this. But as I was filling up on those tetas, I realized there was a little like, humps in a bump. I know that's not funny, but you know, y'all know me. In order to get through things, I laugh about stuff. But there were some little lumpies, girl. And you know, we can go in there. We can do the low reduction and then we can you know take the lumps out and we can do a biopsy to make sure you know these bumps are not these lumps are not cancerous and you know what that's something that i'm glad that they showcase not just the crazy ass shit that goes on in this show they actually showcase hey you can go to get just a routine well shit nothing about getting a breast reduction is routine or any type of augmentation people be going and getting procedures like this is one of the mill honey like put me under 
No, honey, don't get me to talking about medical history and all that stuff because I could sit here all night, but it's very, very important. So I'm so glad that she showcased that because, you know, your people, how do I say this? We are not immune to medical issues happening so don't think it can't happen to you don't think oh i'm feeling fine i don't need to go to the doctor lies it's better to be safe than sorry okay the lyricas i forgot that lyricas mama's name is lyrica i said what the so lyrica number two lyrica squared when i say lyrica squared that means her mama when i say lyrica that's lyrica okay lyrica ends up telling lyrica squared what happened was with her and uh a1 steak sauce because she just sitting around the house she moping and she eating cereal and she don't want to be bothered and lyrica squared is like girl what is wrong with you lyrica squared was like k michelle that's a dirty bitch then she started putting her context clues together she was like hold up how are 80 people saying the same thing about one incident. Something ain't adding up. Erica Square was like, hold up, didn't you tell me Safari sent you an inappropriate picture? She was like, ma, but the way she smiled though was kind of like, hell yeah, but we're not talking about that. And then she had to get real defensive all of a sudden. I said, girl, you are giving yourself away. How are 80 people gonna have the same exact impression of the story at hand. And then you had told me that Safari sent you inappropriate pictures. Like, girl, when Lyrica said that Lyrica Squared was just as messy as K. Michelle, I was like, oh shit, no. Lyrica Squared is putting these pieces together, honey. Girl, you are the one that needs a mop on Al 3, okay? You can, you're too messy, sweetie. So Ray kind of it. You better go ahead, Ray J. I remember seeing his Breakfast Club interview, how he, um, uh, what happened? He secured a deal and it was for some meals. So go ahead, Ray J. That's one thing. Even though I be cracking on Ray J, he's always been about his business. So go ahead. A1 is there. He's so sad over everything. He can't even keep his head up. I'm like, A1, get it together, bucket. A1 ends up telling Ray J everything that's happened with Safari. And Ray J was like, I ain't know that you know the big homie A1 will risk his pearls like that. <laughs> People be joking on A1 and his pearls. I know I do. Safari done made this storyline all about him. Think about it. Everybody is talking about Safari's dick. Like, everybody's talking about this. It blew up online. Like, Safari, that's a smart little businessman. That's a smart little man. Well, that's not a little man, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm just like, uh, Brooke. Put that dick away. That's too much. That's a lot. Put it up. Put it away. My boo boo Fizz is back. He comes over to the little Raycon event. And Fizz, he look a little tired or something. I don't know. Maybe it's his little haircut. I don't know. But last season and season before that, he was fine as hell. He's still fine though. I love Fizz lesson. I'm going to always love little Fizz. B2K was my everyday thing back in high school. I enjoyed Oh my God. I love me some B2K. But little Fizz, he was all over my locker. Oh my goodness. Yes, he was. I Rockstar comes through. He already annoys me. I was looking like, Hoppo, who this man? Everybody is at this event, including Apple Watch. Rockstar now want to work with Apple because of A1. So I guess him and A1 have some type of rivalry. Underneath it all, they really don't like each other because I don't know. You can sense when people don't like each other. And I didn't sense like a little healthy competition was, oh, you're so stupid. No, I was like, a, I really don't like you. What's up with Rockstar and this brush, this wave brush? Like, stop. You're in a public place. Cut it out. The waves aren't there, sir. Don't worry about it. We go to A1's house, right? Mama Pam is there, and I'm guessing she's making cornbread. Um, <laughs> okay. She's sensing that something's up with A1. And she's like, yo, it's obvious, cuz. You need to let that shit ride, dog." All the while, she's stirring this cornbread. And I'm like, huh, okay. It seemed like a setup to me. The way VH1 sets this stuff up, it's too much. And here comes Lyrica Squared, like, Lucy, I'm all, who keep their door unlocked? Like, we don't keep our doors unlocked? Like, I'm, I'm a little confused. Like, who can just bust in your house? Now, granted, you got a whole camera crew there, but still. <laughs> the whole while, before I knew it was cornbread mix, I was sitting there like, what is Pam making? Like, is she making a cake? Is this mac and cheese? And a pudding? I'm, I'm trying to sense everything that would be that color. You know what I'm saying? So either way, I don't know why I was so fixated on what Pam was making. I wasn't even thinking about what they were talking about. All the while, Lyrica Squared is talking about, you did this to my daughter, you listening to other people, what the fuck you doing? And then that's where... Uh, Pam was like, uh, did somebody say what the fuck you, you ain't go. And then Pam, I wish I had a prop, but I don't. She took the whole bowl with the mix. No regard to A1. I thought she was going to throw it at Lyrica Squared. It went all over A1. 
one steak sauce and it's dreads. I was like, oh no, that's going to be a while to get out. Oh my God, you're going to have to wash that whole head of hair. Oh no. Like that's all I was thinking. I was like, no, but who molly wops somebody with a mixing bowl? Like I Oh my God, that was hilarious to me. I was just over it. And then Lyrica squared. I don't know how she picked up a chair. All of this happened in 10 seconds. I don't know what the hell happened. I'm trying to tell you guys, I was looking at the mixing bowl. I was trying to see what she was making because y'all know I'm a foodie. Oh my God, it was just, and all of that happened in 10 seconds. And cake batter, cake mix, whatever the hell she was mixing. A1 was like, bro, you gotta go. You gotta get the fuck out of here. I was like, what? Oh my god, she was trying to look out for you, but okay. Oh my god. Change, bro, ever since you got with Lyrica, huh? Let me get up out of here, bro. I'm like, oh my god. This that whole scene, I was just sitting there like, the hell? Brooke is calling Marcus to the top of a mountain. Wherever the hell they were at. She wants to talk about everything that had happened was at her consultation. And he was basically like, yo, if you want to talk every about everything that happened with Stasia, she was like, look, Marcus. I don't want to talk about that. I need to tell you what happened with me. She tells him what happened and he was like, yo, oh my God. And she was like, can you be there for me, Marcus? Can you be there for me? Yeah, of course I can. I can be the friend you need. The friend that you need. Are you listening, Brooke? He's trying to tell you. He's going to be there as a friend. Are you listening? Of course she wasn't listening. She, she, Brooke, she don't listen. Apple Watts goes to see Rockstar. I'm trying to tell y'all, Rockstar, I got to... A funny taste in my mouth about him. I, mm -mm -mm. No, I knew he was up to no good when he invited Apple Watts. But she was excited. She was like, look, I got two people want to work with me. Let me roll up through him. Yo, I mean, let me hear something. Yabba dabba do. You smell like doo doo. He was like, oh, that's fine. I was like, okay. <laughs> you are, okay. Like, granted, she might have some rhymes up her sleevelet that are good. I, but that, I was like, what the hell? But okay. You fired though, but I have an issue. A1. Apple Watch, she put everything together. She was like, you are playing me. I am not going to be the main pawn between you and him. That ain't going to work with me, dog. I ain't doing that. Ultimately, we figure out that Rockstar is salty, that A1 is now on. Like, everybody can eat, bro, bro. I don't know why you mad, but there's something underlying with that, too, because that's not all that it was. Apple is like, bro, you petty. I got to go. I'm going to make it regardless. I was like, you know what, Apple Watch? Your credibility with me is going up, mama. I like that. We're on the LA tour stop. Bridget is now opening up for K. Michelle. She was like, shit, A, B, C, D. <laughs> but she was like, I'm gonna get this little coin, honey. So uh, K. Michelle, she's performing too. I think this is pre before she got everything sucked out of her hips and her booty. But either way, I will say, K. Michelle, I've seen her perform live, and she has a good show. I enjoyed her show. So if you, you need to see K. Michelle in concert, she good. I like some of her songs. I don't know all her songs, but she got a good set. After the show, Paris is there, and they're talking a little bit. And then out of nowhere, they see, they don't see, they hear Lyrica squared outside. I mean, this is a setup, because there's no way that somebody just... Granted, people will walk up all the time trying to get backstage, but the way she just walked up and it was just her, I was like, okay. She walks up to security. I need to see K. Michelle. They were like, no, ma'am, you can't do that. She just starts hollering, K. Michelle, K. Michelle, K. Michelle. Paris comes out. She like, yo, ma'am, like, nah, like, you can't see K. Michelle. Like, you, her name ain't even Michelle. Like, what are you doing? This ain't gonna work. I think it's great that your daughter is messing with Safari. Straight. I was done with Paris. I'm always done with Paris. I forgot what she said, but it sounded something like that. I was like, girl, you so fatty. Here comes Ray J. He was like, yo, I'm gonna go see K. Michelle. And security was like, yeah, go ahead. Lyrica Square was like, I'm coming with you, Ray J. <laughs> no, you're not, ma'am. No, you're not, ma'am. To the back. Ray J goes to the back to talk to K. Michelle. They chop it up for a little bit. And she's basically telling him, child, it's just a bunch going on. I'm trying to keep my name out of stuff. But people petty. Gotta tell people what's really going on. And he was like, what's going on with you and Safari? And everything. And she was like, oh, my big dick friend, Safari. I'm done. I get out. You probably got that in her phone. My big dick friend, Safari. They're walking out and here comes Monice. I said, oh, Lord. He was like, oh, so here comes the chick that likes throwing chairs at pregnant women. She was like, yes, here I am. Here I come. Here I come. I was like, you know what? Monice has so, I mean, her balls are, 
they're there. Yo, you know, my feelings are hurt because, you know, all I care about is princess. But you, like, your heart is so cold. It's like an ice box. You feel me? Ultimately, Moniece, keep all chairs to yourself, especially around pregnant people. Like, you don't do that. What if you were pregnant? Would you want that to happen to you? But I can understand where she's coming from. Like, Princess, she you can't just say whatever you feel like. I think both of them need to apologize, keep their names out of each other's mouths, and now the families are at war. It's just, oh my God, it's just a petty war. It's just a mess. I, I'm not going to try to analyze it because I don't care. After everything that happened, A1 invites his mama to dinner. He didn't know that his brother was going to be there. I guess his mama told his brother what had happened was and how he kicked her out of the house. His brother was like, yo, you got to explain it to do cuz. He was like, she threw cornbread mix on me. You didn't have to kick me out. Then it was like a family war. Out of nowhere, his brother was like, this your mama, homie. Where my old brother out before the hair and the pearls and the nail polish. I was like, why y'all so mad over this dude's little stylistic? I'm not Floyd no more, y'all. I made what? I, this whole argument, I was just sitting there like, is this real? Wow, then out of nowhere, they lunge at each other, messing up these people's nice restaurant, nice little ambiance. His brother was grabbing at the pole in the restaurant to get the A1. I, oh my God. I, sir, sit down. His mom was like, you need to wake the fuck up. It, it was just too much. <laughs> I was laughing at the whole thing. It was just hilarious to me. Like, what the hell? Another what the hell. Safari and Ray J meet up because Ray J's had enough. He needs to get to the source. This whole scene, I've seen this on Instagram. I've seen it on Facebook. I just wanted to take Ray J's cap off. Every single scene where it panned back to Ray J, his cap was in another direction. I just wanted to rip that shit off. Ray J was like, look, Safari, you done been accused of doing like sexual acts with other people's wives, dawg. Let's sidebar everything Safari was saying. I really enjoyed how Ray J strategically pieced this together so that Safari would either say yay or nay. Figure out that Safari sent that dick pic to Lyrica first. <gasps> the plot, thicken it. Also, Ray J was like, yo, bro, why you do that? Lyrica already said that y'all had messed around. You know, her and um, whatever the hell his name is, A1, they getting back together. They need to squash it. So you need to talk to them and figure that out because she's already said that y'all messed around. Like, why you do that, bro? This was gonna be the gotcha gotcha. Safari could either say, hell no, I am not digging that. I wasn't doing that. But he said, yo, it just happened. Like, I ain't mean for nothing to happen. And Ray J was like, no. I wanted you to deny, deny. But you didn't. I was even looking at Safari like, you admitted to it. Oh, my God. What is this Mona Me just trying to reel us in, honey? You know how reality TV is, child. You never know. You never know. Ultimately, Ray J was like, yo, this shouldn't have happened, bro. And I'm even looking at him like, how? Are you going to tell somebody what is right and what's wrong? But you right, Ray J. It shouldn't have happened. That is the episode. Down below in the comment section, I would love to know what did you guys think about this episode? I'm bringing the shout outs back on the next review. So make sure you get it popping down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, love, and all that good stuff. God bless. Bye.